I'd like to welcome everyone to our event today. My name is Larry Pearson. I'm a vice president at Impetus Technologies. It's my pleasure to be your host and MC for today's partner session, along with Databricks entitled Intelligent Automated Modernization of Data Warehouse, ETL, and Analytics. Let me take a minute and cover our agenda today. First, we'll cover the topic of why Databricks Lakehouse and, and what that's all about, how that fits into the other various migration tools that you may have in your, your uh, data modernization journey. Uh, we will also then introduce a, an impetus capability or product called Leap Logic, which will help you to transform legacy workloads four times faster. And uh, you'll be interested to see how we've done that. We've made a major investment in that platform and, and offers some pretty exciting capabilities. That'll be followed by some success stories. And lastly, we'll actually do a short demonstration of how that all works. Let me now introduce our four subject or three subject matter experts that will be taking us through that agenda today. First, Soham Bhatt is from Databricks as their modernization practice lead and lead solutions architect. Works directly with the AWS and AWS partner teams addressing customer uh, complex business issues using modern big data, modern data and analytics uh, solutions. He is especially specialized uh, in modern data engineering practices, especially ETL and uh, data lake architectures using technologies like Databricks, Spark, and Data Lake uh, capabilities. Also with us is D uh, Barry Tuthill. Barry is Vice President of Customer Success for Impetus, and he leads our teams that are responsible for ensuring that we that they properly identify and realize the full business impacts of their modernization of their data modernization projects. Delighted to have Barry with us. Uh, also with us is Sanjay Sharma. Sanjay is a principal architect at Impetus, has been involved from the very early days leading the Impetus lab uh, capability or, or team that developed Leap Logic and developed a lot of the frameworks, practices and capabilities, accelerators specifically that we offer today and we'll be covering during this event. So to get us kicked off, I'd like to invite Soham to jump in and, uh, and cover this first topic on our agenda of why Databricks uh, Lakehouse. Soham, over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Larry. Um, and let's get started, right? So as you can see in this um, uh, chart, right? Uh, this is showing an enterprise's data maturity curve. So all the market leading companies are to the right. They are doing predictive modeling, prescriptive analytics, and even automated decision making in real time, right? If you look at the left hand side of this chart, um, reports, ad hoc queries, data exploration, that's all backward looking, that's all data warehousing. And the forward looking items, streaming, machine learning, et cetera, that's what I think most of the companies are currently doing, <clears throat> modernizing their platforms so that um, all of this could be supported. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the issue is if you, you know, the current issue with the on-prem legacy data warehouses are they are just simply not keeping up and they, they just don't have uh, the, the ability to, you know, keep up with the data volume variety. They don't have support for real time data. And most of the companies are now doing predictive prescriptive analytics. So, for example, uh, customers are churning. OK, good. Well, what customers could churn and then what actions can you take? to prevent them from churning, right? That kind of analytics just cannot happen if you just stick with traditional data warehouses. And then secondly, there are all kinds of issues with on-prem platforms, <clears throat> such as uh, anytime you want to add capacity or nodes, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you will, it's just a very, very, diff, um, very, very expensive to add capacity. You're paying millions of dollars and you sometimes cannot even scale. And then the final point is the vendor lock-in, right? You, let's assume you have Exadata, you have PL SQL. If you have SQL Server, you have T-SQL. So as far as your data is logged in in a proprietary technology, it's not in open source standards. And every time you modernize, uh, you, you have to do a lot of work in converting all the code, right? So 
th those are all the issues with, with you know, legacy uh, data warehouses. Now, you can say that, well, companies are now taking cloud modernization journeys, right? And so sometimes people think, well, let's just move to the cloud and all our issues will go away. Probably not quite. If you look at the data architecture picture here, even if you move to the cloud, yet another cloud data warehouse, yes, your data warehousing use cases will work fine, but it still wouldn't support streaming ingestion. It wouldn't support unstructured data, et cetera. Um, even in the cloud, uh, you are still with a data warehouse, you are still logged in in a proprietary format. And to take care of all your other use cases, such as, you know, it could be uh, predictive maintenance, fraud analytics, threat analytics, um, anything machine learning related, you still need to have a data lake, you still need to have yet another uh, machine learning platform. And then the issue with this is when you do any reporting or analytics, you are now getting data, some from the data warehouse, some from the data lake, some from your ML platform. So you don't have a single version of truth. Right, and even your machine learning platforms, you're constantly doing ETL back and forth. And even your machine learning platform, if it is not, let's assume you say, well, I have an ML platform that works on my data warehouse. Well, you're anyways, the data in your data warehouse is anyways, you know, 10, 15, 20% of your structured data. So you're ignoring 90% of your data, uh, which is in lying in unstructured data format. And your models, ML models are only as effective as the amount of, data you train it on, right? So machine learning on a data warehouse uh, doesn't make sense for those reasons. So how can you solve it, right? I think you can solve it by looking at a lake house platform. So here is the Databricks uh, lake house picture. What you see here is first of all, it's a multi-cloud platform. It can work on any cloud. So there is no cloud vendor lock-in. Beyond that, the data is stored in a Delta Lake format. So you get data reliability and performance. You get acid compliance. So that means if anything fails, it will roll back only if something succeeds, it commits. This wasn't possible in traditional data lakes. And that's why we are very careful to say that we are not a data lake. We are a lake house platform because you get data warehouse functionality and economics, but um, uh, all, all the goodness of a data warehouse and you know, it still works as data lake scale and, and economics. And we have a product called Unity Catalog. It's part of Databricks. What it does is it gives you fine grain governance. Um, you can do data discovery, lineage, search, so that your um, lake house platform is very well governed. It doesn't become a data swamp, uh, but you have a very clear idea on, on the data classifications and, and so on. And then most importantly, in this concept, your data is lying in an open source Delta Lake format. You can use Parquet, you can use Delta Lake and so on. And if you observe uh, the top parts in the green, that's the different compute. So compute is coming to the data. You're not constantly doing ETL from one system to another. Uh, so data engineering is possible, streaming is possible off the bat. Uh, data warehousing, as well as machine learning and data science. So it greatly simplifies your architecture compared to the previous use case uh, that you saw. So uh, point being, uh, just moving to the cloud wouldn't solve your problem. You kind of need a way to simplify your architecture. Now, Databricks is the only platform that is a Gartner leader in both data management and data science uh, magic quadrants of Gartner. So that kind of validates our stance on, on being a lake house platform. It's almost a new category. Now, if you're concerned that, well, okay, this is a, this was historically um, a, 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 a big data platform, machine learning platform. Can I do proper data warehousing on it? So the answer is definitely yes. Uh, as you can see, it's actually the most price performance data warehouse currently available in the cloud. Um, you can see some graphs here. And I think the point to note here is as your data grows, uh, so at 30 terabyte scale, we are like six per, uh, six X uh, more price performance than other cloud data warehouses. But at 100 terabyte, we are actually 12 X more price performance. If you look at this cloud data warehouse three, 
when the data grows around three times, the cost increased almost six times from 273 to 1700 plus, right? Whereas with Databricks, you saw that it's still pretty, pretty reasonable. So as if you have a lake house platform, you have to think about uh, this as well, right? You have to think that as your data grows, you don't want uh, your prices to grow exponentially. Uh, we recently set an official data warehousing world record. All the results are formally audited by TPC Council. It's at tpc.org. And here's the blog that references it. As you can see, it was found. Uh, this was done by Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and uh, they found Databricks to be 2.7 times faster and 12 times better in price performance at 100 terabyte uh, scale. Now, it's not just that we are just fast, right? Uh, the key thing is it's no longer Python and a lot of Spark needed to do data warehousing on Databricks because we have this product called Databricks SQL. It's a first class SQL development experience. You have a nice um, query editor. You can browse schemas, write query, fully NC SQL compliant, and you can do all kinds of dashboarding, uh, et cetera, to make sense of your data. Uh, so, with this, you kind of know why a lake house versus a data warehouse. But then the question remains, how would you modernize or migrate thousands of your ETL jobs, which could be lying in Informatica, Binitio, uh, data stage, et cetera, or um, on-prem data warehouses like Teradata entities Oracle, how to get it to a Databricks lake house architecture in an automated manner? Right, so that's where Leap Logic comes in. Uh, Leap Logic is our partner that can help you with auto code transformation to Databricks uh, Lake House architecture. Um, and to learn more about it, let me hand it over to Barry and I'll learn more. Thank you. Thanks, Soham. Uh, that was great stuff. Um, fantastic information on uh, the power of, of Databricks's Lake House platform. Uh, but before we get into the specifics on on leap logic, unfortunately, I'm, I am going to start off with some uh, somewhat sobering information on on cloud migration. Uh, here are some recent data points that came out of uh, McKinsey earlier this year, highlighting the dilemma enterprises are dealing with uh, related to cloud modernization. Uh, as you can see, approximately 100 billion will be wasted in migration spend over the next three years. Uh, if left unchecked, this is gonna wipe out a staggering $500 billion in shareholder value. Uh, we also see that the top technology transformations that enterprises are looking at um, are scaling data analytics and AI and enhancing IT architecture, and that more than half are concerned about the technical challenges and bo uh, budget overruns uh, related to uh, migration. So these are some uh, bleak data points on, on cloud migration, uh, but the good news is, is that Impetus has been building solutions to address uh, these issues for, for many years. Uh, so when looking at uh, moving data platforms to the cloud, enterprises have many considerations that they need to plan for and be very thoughtful about. Uh, things like how do I handle the decades of investments in data platforms that are in many cases integrated and very complex. Uh, oftentimes we see clients uh, need to resolve technical debt that's been accumulated over many years, um, but due to limited technical documentation, that pathway uh, to remediate that debt isn't super clear. Uh, there's oftentimes a lot of debates around lift and shift versus uh, total re-engineering. All, all, you know, each one of those uh, have their own advantages and, and disadvantages. Uh, with either approach you take, the effort, time, and cost can be uh, very significant. Um, and finally, these projects are you know can be riddled in risk uh, because at, you know, at the end of the day, there's really no room for failure. Uh, we're talking about mission critical applications that are powering uh, the decisions that your uh, businesses are making day in and day out. Um, but you know, I, I also have more good news. This is uh, also something that Impetus has been working on for a very long time, uh, and we've come up with with methodologies and, and automate automation to you know, address all these concerns. Um, 
so our, our approach and point of view on uh, data platform modernization is unique. Uh, so we bring automation to the table called LeapLogic, and it's been enhanced and perfected uh, for the migration to Databricks due to the years and years of experience that we've had uh, converting enterprises legacy uh, environments over to Spark. Um, our approach is a blend of migrating and transforming existing code and logic in an automated and optimized way for Databricks, as well as identifying the technical debt and complexities that may require new design thinking and, and things that, you know, quite frankly, might just need to, to go away. 80% um, of uh, this migration of legacy systems over to, to Databricks can be auto-transformed in an optimized way to Databricks. 10% uh, of that code may require some level of, of manual intervention uh, during the, the migration and conversion process. And another 10% may be required to be to be re-engineered. And this is, you know, our point of view. This is what we've seen doing, you know, many, many migrations of customers over to Databricks. Um, and, you know, essentially, you know, through our platform platform processing billions of lines of code uh, through our, our engine. Uh, here's an example of how we've moved a client from Informatica and Natiza uh, in, in that environment over to Azure. In, in Databricks. Uh, we're all well aware of the, the end of life issues uh, around Netiza. And we also have seen a number of clients concerned around the costs and limitations of, of moving to uh, Informatica on the cloud. Um, so in this case, the, the client was migrating to Azure, including Databricks and, and ADF. Uh, they saw massive performance improvements, uh, also while enabling to scale uh, their, their data like they never could before. Uh, we did this migration in half the time and cost that they had originally forecasted for this, this project. Um, as you can see here, we're working with some of the biggest brands and, and largest companies out there on cloud modernization. Uh, more than just our accelerator that uh, Impetus brings to the table, our clients value our, our technical expertise and, and experience with building out modern data platforms on the cloud from the ground up. Um, with Databricks, we're doing conversions of all sorts of different legacy uh, data warehouses, ETL, um, and even uh, other analytical platforms like SAS. Um, last slide here, uh, just a, a quick uh, overview of, of, of LeapLogic to you know, give you kind of a visual uh, view of, of what we're talking about here. So LeapLogic has the ability to take any of these legacy uh, systems that you see on the, the left and, and migrate it to the equivalent uh, capabilities in an optimized way uh, to run on Databricks in the cloud, as you can see on the right. Uh, we go through, uh, well, we have a very detailed methodology uh, that goes along with our, our tool LeapLogic, and we go through four steps. Uh, step one is, is the assessment step. This is where we're looking at all of the different artifacts that you'd find in uh, the, the legacy data warehouse world. So scheduler and orchestration scripts, uh, ETL scripts, query logs from the data warehouse environment, et cetera. We bring that all together in our assessment module of LeapLogic to give uh, our customers a, a 360 degree view of their legacy landscape. And, and with that view, we're able to build out a migration plan with our customer to identify the level of automation that we'll get within this project to uh, you know, identify complexities and technical debt that we'll want to uh, remediate during the migration process um, and deliver an overall optimized and accelerated you know, approach for this, this assessment because we have a complete view of the, the legacy environment. Uh, next step is transformation. This is where we bring in uh, the, the secret sauce of LeapLogic, which is a pattern-based transformation engine. And what this engine does is actually mimics what an intelligent engineer would do to convert this legacy code over to uh, Databricks. But again, we're doing this in an automated way, and it's all uh, pattern-based. Um, you know, typically we'll get anywhere from, you know, 80 to even 90 plus percent automated conversion based on 
uh, you know, different uh, source patterns moving over to Databricks. Next is validation. This is where we're automating the, the testing of not only the, the fact that we move the data over and, and, and that's moved over the right way, we're also automatically validating that the converted code is running the way we would expect it. So we're actually matching the result set between the source and target to make sure that they're matching. And we know that with high confidence, the code has been converted in the right way and performing the right way. And, and finally, operationalization. Um, this is more of the end-to-end the -end delivery components of any project like this, right? We have to go through systems integration testing. We have to go through user acceptance testing. There's parallel run. There might be other types of uh, productionization type activities that need to happen to ultimately get uh, you know, the, the enterprise DevOps ready in, uh, in Databricks. But you know, from a, a delivery perspective, LeapLogic through uh, Impetus Professional Services or through our SI partners, we're able to deliver that end-to-end uh, migration program and, and get that customer in a, that DevOps ready state in an accelerated way. Uh, so with that, I am going to pass it over to, to Sanjay to dig into some of the, the technical details of LeapLogic. Uh, Sanjay, over to you. Thanks, uh, uh, Barry. Uh, I'll uh, go through the details of LeapLogic as well as the uh, demo. Uh, as a way of introduction, my name is Sanjay Sharma. I'm the principal architect and VP of product engineering for LeapLogic. As Barry shared, uh, we uh, have uh, varying uh, levels of automation levels possible uh, for different uh, technology uh to data breaks uh for example for terraria and it is uh, we can get up to 95 percent accuracies uh whereas uh for uh, oracle and sql server uh, given that they have tls t uh, sql and pl sql the percentage might be a bit lower similarly on the ab initio informatica data stage side we do uh, get uh, automation anywhere from 70 to 90 percent uh, SAS uh, is uh, one of the new joiners uh, to the group uh, where we are able to support anywhere from 50% to 80% depending on the complexity. Now, this variation is uh, mostly due to the complexity and, and the legacy uh, within the code. If something was written 10, 15 years ago, it does take more, uh, more, more effort to move those. Uh, whatever percentage is not uh, covered as a part of automation is uh, taken care by the leap logic ps team uh, so as such the customer uh, does get 100 uh, percent converted code as a part of the automation we're also taking care of uh, orchestration and creating pipelines and other things that might be needed for end-to-end -end productionization of these systems uh, let's deep dive into the transformation approaches for uh, some of these uh, legacy sources. So for uh, uh, data warehouse uh, like Teradata or Netiza or Oracle or SQL Server or Vertica, we start with uh, collating all the input artifacts, which are the DMLs, DDLs. We can also take in specialized scripts like BTEX, uh, short procedures, as well as ingestion workloads like uh, M load, fast load, uh, SQL plus uh, uh, SQL loader, and so on. Uh, and then uh, start converting those into equivalent side on the Databricks uh, lake house. Uh, all tables by default are converted as uh, data uh, tables, uh, whereas uh, all the uh, code is converted into primarily SQL uh, with uh, PySpark or Spark Scala being used for procedural constructs uh, if if needed. Uh, then uh, we are also able to create uh, uh, jobs or pipelines and then uh, have the end code published to Databricks uh, lake house environment as uh, notebooks or reusable libraries. For uh, ETL conversion, the approach is similar except that uh, for informatica and data stage, 
we will uh, need extracts of the uh, jobs in form of uh, XMLs or DSS, DSX files for uh, data stage. Uh, for Abinitio, it's a bit more uh, complex where we don't, uh, we, we will be using uh, generated scripts out of Abinitio uh, uh, to understand the business logic of the flows uh, and then use the various components and mappings within the ETL jobs to again create similar pipelines on the on the database side in form of uh, PySpark notebooks, uh, where uh, complex things like XFRs in Abinitio or uh, complicated expressions in Informatica uh, will get converted into uh, Spark Scala or Python code with uh, data frames based operations. The end result again is the same where we have jobs or pipelines uh, that are running as a part of uh, Databricks Lake House. SaaS conversion uh, is an interesting area uh, for us where most of the customers do want to move to uh, advanced platforms like Databricks. So uh, for SaaS, we are able to uh, take the SaaS uh, scripts, uh, SaaS programs and models along with enterprise guide projects, uh, which can be uh, uploaded into Lee project uh, where we are able to again convert everything into uh, PySpark uh, or uh, Spark SQL code. Uh, we do use uh, a reusable library of equivalent SaaS proc, func uh, SaaS procs and uh, SaaS functions. Uh, which uh, provide the same capability as SaaS in Databricks environment. And uh, the uh, packaging is again in form of uh, uh, Databricks notebooks where uh, one SaaS program ideally gets converted into a, 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 into a Databricks notebook. Overall, uh, for all the uh, technology supported within uh, LeapLogic, we are able to reduce the effort by almost 50% as compared to a, a manual approach of migration. Uh, of course, we can't quantify the, the risk reduction we get when we move to a machine-based conversion. Uh, of course, uh, as Barry mentioned, we do ensure that the code is fully human compatible and uh, is is uh, uh, looks like a, a SaaS smart uh, looks like a smart uh, developer has written the code. As you can see, the maximum benefit uh, as far as reduction of effort is concerned is on the transformation of the code conversion side which includes schema migration, data migration, code conversion, and packaging, as well as on, uh, on the validation side where we are able to use uh, advanced uh, validation techniques like automated cell-to-cell -cell validation uh, reporting to reduce the overall uh, human effort. Uh, and lastly, on the orchestration side as well, uh, we are able to uh, use automated packaging and performance tuning up ahead as a part of the transformation itself to reduce the effort there as well. I'll now uh, move on to the demo. Uh, LeapLogic is available in a cloud hosted environment and can be uh, easily installed in customer environments as well on any Linux machine or virtual machine. Uh, currently, the product is used mostly by the LeapLogic PS team uh, or, or train partners using their web-based interface. The user journey follows the four-step four, uh, process, uh, assessment, transformation, validation, and operationalization. I'll now log in and go through the same process and focus on assessment and transformation today. Uh, we'll also focus on Oracle PL SQL transformation and Informatica transformation. We start with our detailed assessment. 
that covers an enterprise legacy environment running uh, Teradata as uh, the primary data warehouse, Informatica as the ETL tool, and Autosys as the enterprise unit. Uh, LeapLogic is uh, unique in using an approach that takes in various sources of information to create deep insights into legacy environment. The sources of information vary from execution logs to DML to ETL extracts to scheduler and execution scripts to report extracts. For this particular assessment, LeapLogic is using Teradata, uh, DBC, PDC, uh, uh, PDCR uh, query execution logs, uh, M loads, uh, BTEC scripts in form of code, uh, DDLs, uh, table volume matrix, uh, uh, Informatica power center XMLs, and uh, Autosys uh, jobs export, uh, exported as JIL files. LeapLogic analyzes all this information and generates cross references between these systems and provides a detailed view of the assessment. Uh, let me first start with the SQL uh, analysis part uh, where we are able to cross reference the DML code with the execution logs. Uh, what we see over here are around 10,000 SQLs that were fired as a part of the that, that were, uh, p p fired as a part of the execution query logs. Out of this, around 4,000 uh, are unique, uh, whereas 507 are uh, unique patterns. This unique pattern uh, is uh, uh, an important factor for us because it helps us understand what are the actual patterns we will uh, transform to the database environment. Again, to uh, reiterate, uh, LeapLogic uses a pattern-based conversion approach rather than a line-by-line -line conversion approach. Uh, for each SQL here, we are also able to drill down on the uh, on the statement types uh, and uh, uh, and the other uh, complexities of SQL. Uh, for example, we use, use a, sco a score of one to around 2030 with anything more than 10 calculated using a, a, a machine learning algorithm to get the uh, accurate uh, complexity of a given workload. We are also able to extract and cross-reference the DDL information in the uh, SQL to the actual DDLs where we can safely figure out uh, how many are unused tables, how many are used tables, how many are missing as a part of the uh, scripts or uh, as a part of the uh, logs. We're also able to figure out if the tables are permanent uh, or their views or how many intermediate or temporary tables are there. Uh, we're also able to use this information to start uh, finding and type patterns as well, where we'll also be able to figure out how much will require re-engineering versus how many can be uh, uh, auto-rectified by the engine itself. We're also able to uh, look at orchestration optimization where uh, the Le LeapLogic engine can actually specify hyper-parallelism uh, supported orchestration where we will split uh, sequential flows or, se or uh, sequential uh, dependent flows in the legacy environment to a more data break friendly parallel orchestration environment. We're also able to go into schema optimization and uh, start looking at recommendations on cluster by, partition by keys, as well as uh, 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 Z order of Bloom index for uh, data breaks. Lastly, we are able to use the query logs to 
uh, get a detailed insights into the resource utilization with a, with a CPU and I utilization, uh, which we can then combine with the consumption patterns based on application utilities. Uh, for example, here we see that uh, BTEX, uh, uh, the primary ETL, ELT engine in Teradata are taking around 50% time, around 31% CPU and 32% IO utilization. We also know uh, how many schemas and uh, the workloads it is uh, firing on. We also uh, correlated with the number of uh, sys, uh, database users which are uh, uh, being used to use these processes. Uh, for example, from this, we can figure out that the ad hoc usage using SQL Assistant is high. Uh, so this shows SQL Assistant on the Windows side, whereas we also see SQL Assistant and SQL A again. So the percentage of uh, ad hoc usage seems to be uh, really high. We can also uh, assess the uh, capacity that will be needed for ingestion or export uh, vis a vis uh, fast load or fast uh, export or TVT export uh, like application utilities here. Uh, let's uh, go to the recommendations on the schema optimization. So depending on the data volume matrix for larger uh, tables, uh, uh, the engine is able to see uh, what kind of bloom filter index uh, is needed as well as uh, the order indexing. We're also able to figure out how how much how many cluster uh, what are the cluster by keys, uh, and uh, if if applicable, the engine will also tell us the partition by keys, split by sort by keys, and other things. Uh, let me touch base uh, on the lineage a little bit because uh, this uh, becomes very important when we are talking about larger systems and how to understand the flow of information across the various systems uh, in the application. So here uh, we're seeing a very complicated view uh, where we can see the uh, connection between Autosys job to uh, uh, actual uh, DDL or DML scripts or, uh, Autos or uh, the Informatica jobs. So you can, uh, use this information to uh, first of all, create an exact inventory of things. Uh, secondly, we can also utilize this to segregate workloads as per business or uh, technical priorities, and then uh, move them to database environment in our staggered uh, planned approach. Uh, let's go to now uh, transformation. Uh, where we'll start with uh, uh, a generic uh, flow of how we use the four step approach uh, for our transformation. So, we are doing a, a, a Teradata uh, to Databricks Lake, lake House conversion here. Uh, this is an internal pipeline generated uh, within the LeapLogic tool, which depicts the various stages uh, of the four step process. So, we start with migration where we will be migrating the uh, tables and views from the Teradata environment to Databricks environment. Uh, we'll then do the code conversion uh, for the business logic. Uh, we'll do a data baselining uh, and compare the data between uh, uh, Teradata and uh, Delta tables in an automated fashion. Once we have done the transformation, uh, the packaging will happen automatically. Uh, uh, we'll execute the code and then do a post validation where we compare the results of the Teradata execution uh, with respect to the uh, database execution and ensure that everything is same. Uh, we also use something called query validation, uh, which is a patent pending uh, technique of doing unit testing where we are able to generate data uh, for the various boundary conditions for each and every uh, workload uh, at a unit level and then compare the results. Let's look at uh, some of the uh, report report uh, reports provided by the by the product. So uh, for migration, we can essentially see uh, what were the 
uh, tables that have been migrated from uh, Teradata to uh, Databricks data tables. Uh, here we are doing a simple check uh, of having the rows count met. Uh, we can uh, also look at the baseline reports where we are able to uh, see if the uh, data has been moved correctly or not. We can do cell to cell validation or we can do matrix level uh, checks like average min max as well. On the transformation side, uh, we are able to uh, see the converted code and the accuracy of the conversion. So here we had 10 SQLs, all of them were converted to database compliant code. I'll deep dive into uh, Oracle today. Uh, we okay, execute the code uh, where we'll uh, be able to see the time taken other things. Uh, this data validation will ensure that uh, the same validation technique is getting used for uh, correcting uh, for for uh, matching the results uh, after the data or after the data and the code has been migrated, and this is the query validation I was talking about, which is a unit testing approach uh, where the tool will generate data and then uh, showcase if uh, there was a perfect match or not. In case the tool uh, is uh, uh, showing mismatches, the uh, tool can also be used to uh, change the SQL. Uh, within the uh, tool itself, and then uh, edit the things as needed. Let me now deep dive into uh, the uh, in, into a, an Oracle uh, PL SQL uh, demo, a transformation demo. So in this case, uh, we are going to look at the transformation of a uh, PL SQL code uh, which has cursors in it. Actually, it has two cursors. We have exception uh, uh, logging, uh, exception handling here. We also have a, a for loop in form of uh, the cursors getting iterated. And then we have specific updates that are happening as a part of the overall operation. Uh, so uh, we uh, uploaded this PL SQL code along with the DDS needed, and uh, uh, and the uh, product will uh, use the same pipeline based approach where we uploaded the code to generate the transformed code. Uh, on the SQLs within the uh, short procedure, uh, we uh, do uh, show the percentage of conversion. So here, uh, if there are things that need to be applied for, uh, for uh, uh, compliance with uh, Databricks SQL, uh, we'll take care of that. As you can see, we are doing a casting here. Uh, one of the important uh, optimizations here uh, is converting all the update commands into a merge uh, command. Uh, so that we can use the power of uh, Delta uh, tables. Let's go to the actual packaging uh, since uh, it, it does involve intelligent handling of the cursors. So one of the approaches that we enforce is to go away from the sequential uh, way of handling data in PL SQL or T-SQL code and move to a database compliant uh, code base here. We were converting the cursors into tables. This can very well be uh, temporary views as well. Uh, uh, but here we are uh, for production, uh, for development environment, we convert those into uh, tables and then use the uh, Databricks merge statement uh, to not only merge the cursor into uh, a join statement, but also uh, convert the updates into much. We're also able to take care of exception and other thing. Let me see how this notebook looks like in a Databricks environment as a notebook. So as you can see here, we do have uh, common libraries. We'll take care of common functions, uh, common function, but the uh, overall paradigm remains the same uh, where we are, uh, uh, where we have the 
procedural constructs being taken uh, care of through uh, Python uh, variable declarations and other things, uh, whereas the uh, cursors are getting converted to uh, delta tables. Uh, we can use uh, a PySpark uh, format or a Spark Scala format, or we can also jump to using a, a more uh, SQL-like approach, depending on uh, what kind of user base uh, is uh, developing uh, or will be maintaining this code going forward. Uh, uh, the variable uh, counts and other things, uh, the engine is intelligent to take care of those things. Uh, as uh, I was showing earlier, we're uh, able to take care of try catch exceptions and other things, but also able to take care of uh, uh, the optimizations with the, with the SQLs over here. In all, what we are getting here is a uh, full fledged notebook equivalent to that. Uh, to the same sort of procedure and we can pass parameters to it as a part of a job uh, as would a uh, short procedure do. Uh, let's now move on to an Informatica uh, demo on the same lines. Uh, Informatica, uh, the approach remains same where we are uh, able to upload the, uh, the power center exported XMLs onto the tool the tool will analyze the the uh, graph and uh, the, uh, the graph or the job. Uh, the same process is used for data stage and ab initio as well. So as you can see here, uh, uh, the graph here has multiple uh, components uh, such as uh, uh, sources, uh, target. Of course, uh, we have aggregator joiners. Uh, again, uh, uh, filters, expressions, and other things. Uh, let's also look at the image of this in a in in a uh, in an Informatica uh, view. Uh, Leap logic will do the transformation uh, for the same, and. Uh, produce uh, a set of code base which does uh, take care of uh, uh, reusing the code in form of workflows uh, as well as the actual uh, mappings where each of the uh, step uh, can be easily converted into a method here. Uh, let's look at a database equivalent notebook for the same. So as as you can see here, the uh, transformation engine does provide a lot of uh, metadata information, uh, especially for uh, quick uh, validation that the code has been correctly uh, converted. Uh, so for each uh, stage, we see a subsequent uh, transformation. Uh, one of the principles that we try to use is to convert all the transformation logic as a part of uh, sequence. Uh, so, for example, joins uh, or filters and other things are actually converted into uh, sequels. Uh, this uh, allows us to utilize the power of uh, Databricks, uh, Spark Catalyst Engine, or the upcoming or the Photon Engine, uh, which will be able to provide a lot of uh, parallelism and performance for uh, these kind of transformations. So effectively, we are going away from an ETL approach to an ELT approach where the Databricks uh, uh, parallel and performant environment uh, is easily able to meet and beat uh, the SLAs required for these Informatica jobs. Uh, the end result, again, as you can see, is uh, a notebook which is equivalent to the equivalent to uh, the uh, functionality of a uh, uh, in ab initio graph or an informatica job or a data state job uh, we do the same for sas as well uh, where uh, we are able to convert 
uh, SAS programs also into similar notebooks. Uh, here is a view of uh, a SAS program conversion uh, where we are converting different model mod scoring models as parallel pipelines. Uh, this view uh, is auto generated by the Delta Live table uh, feature in Databricks, uh, a new feature that is uh, has uh, uh, been added to Databricks. We are currently working with the Databricks Delta team, uh, Delta Live table team to enable support. Uh, soon we'll have uh, the support for uh, for ETL and uh, EDW pipeline is also to be available as Delta Live Table pipeline. I'll now uh, hand it over to Barry for uh, concluding the uh, the webinar today. Barry, over to you. Sanjay, thanks so much for the great demo. Uh, just to finish up with a, a, a few slides here, uh, the value you get from LeapLogic um, obviously is, is all the value of the automated assessment and planning that you get, but we also deliver up to 95% auto conversion of the actual code. Uh, this decreases efforts as well as time to market, and there's nearly zero risk uh, with an implementation impetus be guaranteeing delivery in both a fixed time and cost. Um, and at the same time, we're preserving the investments of existing business, business logic. That makes sense from uh, your previous architecture to your modern data architecture. Uh, we've built some joint packages with Databricks to help create your own assessment and impl implement an MVP. Uh, this includes leveraging LeapLogic as well as Impetus and Databricks resources. Uh, so reach out to either your Impetus sales representative or uh, your Databricks sales representative for more details. Uh, and finally, we are a diamond sponsor at the Data and AI Summit. Uh, this is between June 27th and 30th. Sanjay and I will be there. Uh, please. Uh, come out and, and look for us at booth 411. Also consider attending our joint session with AARP where we're going to be talking about the value of automating uh, uh, the process of migrating SAS over to Databricks. With that, um, I will uh, pass it back over to Larry Pearson. Thank you, Barry, to our audience today for attending this uh, event and also to our speakers for the great material which you shared. Uh, Barry, it's, it, it dawns on me that there are a couple of questions that may be on the minds of our audience today as, they, as we close this out. And I thought we'd just take a minute to address those and then I've got a couple other closing things and that will conclude our event today. And the first question is how can customers get started? And there are also questions here that have to do with is this a service offering or is this a product which is licensed uh, from uh, Impetus or, or LeapLogic? And Barry, if you could jump in and address those, that would be great. Sure, yeah, thanks, Larry. Those are, are very common questions that we uh, hear in the field all the time. Um, I'm gonna start with the latter. Um, th this is a, a service. Um, so we, we leverage the LeapLogic product as part of a, a managed service. And that service is delivered uh, via impetus as well as our uh, SI partners. So if you, you do have a, uh, an SI partner that you're working with today, uh, no problem. Uh, we can very easily uh, integrate the uh, leap logic offering uh, into that uh, the, the process with your uh, systems integrator. And uh, the second question around how uh, can customers get started? Well, I think the, the assessment component is a very common uh, and, and popular way to, to get started, right? Um, a lot of uh, enterprises are still looking to figure out um, how do we approach a, a migration from uh, the legacy um, you know, tech stack that's running on premise. So uh, we have launched a free self-service offering uh, via uh, our, our Databricks partnership. Uh, so you can reach out to both um, or either your impetus contact or 
uh, your Databricks uh, sales representative um, and say, hey, I want to get a, 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 an assessment done with this uh, LeapLogic offering, and um, we can then coordinate with you from there. Um, so those are two, uh, you know, those are the answers to, to those questions, and I'll pass it back over to you, Larry. Uh, great, Barry, and thank you again to you and to everyone who participated today. For those of you who may want to reach out to us, you can do that by sending an email to info at leaplogic.io, and we'll make sure we follow up and schedule a, a tailored session to whatever questions you may have had after listening to this. Thank you again to everyone. This concludes our event today. Thank you once more.